Hello my dear students. So today we will start our new chapter. Enhancement of food production. Okay. Now under this. The first topic is biofortification. What is this? It is the idea of breeding crops to increase their nutritional value. This can be done either through conventional selective breeding or through genetic engineering. Right? So, what is biofortification? It is the idea of breeding crops to increase their nutritional value. Now, little bit information about the selective breeding <coughs> and genetic engineering. Okay. Now, selective breeding. It involves choosing parents with a particular characteristic to breed together and produce offsprings with some more desirable characteristics. This is called selective breeding. Usually what the breeders do? Breeders cross, this is one example for the plant, okay. So high nutrient variety of the crop, they cross with high yielding variety of crop, okay. Now what they will get to provide a seed with high yield and increased nutritional value. So both the characteristics will come in the offspring. This is the selective breeding. Next is the genetic engineering. So only a little bit information. It refers to the direct manipulation of DNA to alter an organism characteristics in a particular way. So this all comes under the genetic engineering to deal with the DNA directly. Okay. Now what are the objectives of the biofortification? Here, to improve, <coughs> to improve protein content and quality, to improve oil content and quality, to improve vitamin content and to improve micronutrients and minerals content. So these are the main four objectives of the biofortification. Now there are a few examples. Examples means uh, by the biofortification. They produce, they develop the varieties. Now here the hybrid maize with almost double the quantity of amino acids like lysine and tryptophan. <coughs> Excuse me. Now wheat variety, Atlas 66. This one with high protein content. And this one rice variety with five times more iron content. Vitamin A enriched carrot, spinach, pumpkin. Vitamin C enriched bitter gourd, mustard, batua. Batua is a leafy vegetable, okay? Tomato. Calcium enriched spinach. Protein enriched beans, garden pea. These all have been developed at IARI. What is this? Indian Agricultural Research Institute by the process of biofortification. So this is information. Uh, I think enough for the board exam. Main thing is uh, what are the objectives? Even in the exa these examples for the one mark sometimes they ask and the definition. So please go through the uh, points. You can understand very easily by this. Now next topic is microbes in human welfare. So first is microbes in food production. So regarding the dairy products. Lactic acid bacteria LAB like lactobacillus convert lactose sugar of milk into lactic acid. <coughs> then, this lactic acid causes coagulation of milk protein, casein. Now, milk is changed into curd, yogurt and cheese. The inoculum used in preparation of milk products contains millions of LAB, lactic 
acid bacteria okay like lactobacillus now come to the curd is prepared by inoculating cream and skimmed milk with lactobacillus acidophilus okay you have to remember these names these names are very important usually for one or two marks they ask okay so curd is prepared by inoculating cream and skim milk with lactobacillus acidophilus now cheese is partially degraded concentrate of milk fat and casein casein is the protein milk protein manufactured by microorganisms this is regarding cheese now there are few types of cheese are there swiss cheese this one is characterized by its flavor and large holes and these large holes are formed due to the amount of carbon dioxide released by thermophilic bacteria the name of this bacteria is propionibacterium shermani okay now next type is roquefort cheese and this one is characterized by greenish blue mottling it is ripened by penicillium roqueforti then the last one is a camembert cheese this one employs penicillium camberti for ripening so these are the name of the bacteria you have to remember now come to the next is dosa upma and idli they all are prepared by fermentation process of dough now bacteria causing fermentations are streptococcus peccalis then leuconostoc mesenteroids okay bread this dough is mixed with baker yeast now the name of this one botanical name saccharomyces cerevisiae now microbes as source of food now here single cell protein scp algae species such as chlorella mushroom and truffles they are also used as a food now here few examples of edible mushrooms such as first one is a white button mushroom and botanical name is agaricus bisporus next paddy straw mushroom botanical name volvarella volvesi then oyster mushroom the botanical name is pleurotus florida so these are the microbes in human welfare under that microbes in food production we have dairy products dosa dosa upma and idli are prepared by the fermentation process and these are the uh, name of the bacteria botanical name and here the microbes as a source of food and here i have given example of edible mushrooms also please go through these names now after microbes in food preparation next topic is role of microbes in industrial production <coughs> so under that the first one is production of alcoholic beverages now they include liquors like wine beer and whiskey okay now wine production strains of yeast such as saccharomyces cerevisiae okay so strain of yeast such as saccharomyces cerevisiae now here that is used for the wine production different flavors of wine are obtained by using different fruit juices beer obtained from fermented grains mostly barley strain of saccharomyces cerevisiae used for fermentation it is produced through various steps like malting mashing and fermentation now wine and beer they both are produced by without distillation come to the next whiskey it is obtained by fermenting mixed grains of corn wheat barley etc and then this product after the fermentation is distilled so here wine and beer without distillation and whiskey with distillation so this is all about production of alcoholic beverages and this one is important 
Now come to the next organic acid fermentation. Here a number of organic acids are obtained by fermentation using various microbes as given below. Here you can see citric acid. This organic acid is prepared by now here microbe that is Aspergillus niger. Then gluconic acid. This one is also with the help of Aspergillus niger. Now fumaric acid, Rhizopus erysus. And acetic acid with the help of Acetobacter acti. So these are, this is the way organic acids are prepared by the fermentation process. Now come to the next so role of microbe, this alcoholic beverages and here organic acid fermentation. Okay. Now come to the next is vitamin production. There are different types of vitamins. Vitamin A, B, C, D, E and K. So they may be water soluble or fat soluble. Fine. And all the vitamins are not produced in human body. So therefore they are to be consumed through food or tablets. So there are few vitamins and these are the microbial sources such as vitamin B2. So microbial source or prepared with the help of Neurospora gossipi. And one more is there that is Hermothesium absidi. Sorry, ashb. Okay. So Hermothesium ashb and Neurospora gossipi. Now vitamin B12. Here the source is Pseudomonas denitrificans. Vitamin C with the help of Aspergillus niger. So this, this is a vitamin production and here are the few examples I gave. Now come to the next antibiotic production. Now these antibiotics are the substance produced in very small amount by certain microbes to inhibit the growth of other microbes. Okay. Now here the first antibiotic was discovered by Alexander Fleming when he was working with Bacterium Staphylococcus aureus. Okay. Now, here are the few examples of antibiotics and these are the sources by with the help of which type of microbes. Now here, Chloromycetin, this antibiotic. With the help of Streptomyces venezuelae. Then, Erythromycin, Streptomyces atrus. Penicillin, prepared by Penicillium chrysogenum. Then streptomycin with the help of microbe streptomyces grisus. Okay. So these are the name of the antibiotics and these are the sources. Name of the microbes. Now come to the next. Ghibellin production. Right. Now what is ghibellin? This is a growth hormone. And first ghibellin isolated from <coughs> Excuse me. From rice seedling, which is infected with fungus, given a fusicuria. Okay. Now here, about fifteen types of gibberellins has been isolated from this species. Okay. From this given a fusicuria. So this is all about the gibberellin production. Now come to the next enzyme production. What are enzymes? They are biocatalysts. Right? Now here are the few examples of the enzymes and these are the sources. Invertase enzyme. Okay? So with the help of Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Pectinase enzyme. That is Sclerotiana libertin with the help of this microbe. Then lipase enzyme. Rhizopus species. And cellulase enzyme with the help of Trichoderma conigi. So these are the microbial sources and these are the name of the enzyme. So this one, whatever we have studied just now, so that's the role of microbe in industrial production. So we have studied production of alcoholic beverages, organic acid production, okay, vitamin production, antibiotic production, 
then gibberellin production then enzyme production okay so please remember the names and these examples they are very important now microbes in food preparation role of microbe in industrial production over now come to microbes in sewage treatment okay now sewage or municipal waste contains human excreta and other organic waste it also contains a number of pathogenic microbes right now it is made less polluting by passing it through sewage treatment plant stp there are three stages for this treatment primary secondary and tertiary treatment okay now one by one we will go into the detail of each type each step the first is the primary treatment <coughs> and this one is totally physical process fine now under this it removes floating and suspended solid waste from the sewage through filtration and sedimentation now here now filtered sewage right is passed into the grit chamber where coarse solid materials such as sand small pebbles so they settle down by gravity after this the sewage is allowed to pass into the sedimentation tank right so after this filtered sewage when it passed to the grit chamber and after the grit chamber it is passed into the grit chamber then sedimentation tank now here suspended material get concentrated and settled down and this sedimentation is called primary sludge and the supernatant is called effluent so what is settled down is called primary sludge and what is there at the top supernatant is called effluent fine now this primary sludge traps a lot of microbes and debris so it is subjected to compositing land now this one supernatant is effluent upper part now this effluent is taken for secondary treatment so after the primary treatment we got the sec effluent fine and this we will pass to the secondary treatment for the secondary treatment now the secondary treatment is totally a biological process <coughs> this primary effluent this effluent is taken to the aeration tank now liquid is constantly agitated mechanically and air is allowed to pass through agitating mixture this help several aerobic microbes to grow and oxidize the organic matter present in sewage right now all microbes they will form flocks now what is this flocks which are a masses of bacteria held together by slime and fungal filaments to form mesh like structure and that is called flocks the microbes digest a lot of organic matter and converting it into microbial biomass and releasing lot of minerals so due to this bod of waste matter is reduced now what is this bod biochemical oxygen demand isn't it now this biological or biochemical oxygen demand represents the amount of dissolved oxygen that would be consumed 
if all the organic matter in one liter of water were oxidized by microorganisms fine so because of this that microbes digest a lot of organic matter converting into microbial biomass releasing a lot of minerals so due to this the beauty of waste matter is reduced now this one is passed for the tertiary treatment so now effluent is passed to sedimentation tank where microbial flocks are allowed to settle down so in the tertiary treatment these microbial flocks are allowed to settle down and the settled material settled material is called activated <coughs> activated sludge fine now effluent is generally now this is settled material down but the effluent is generally passed into natural water bodies such as rivers or treated with chemicals for purification fine now a part of activated sludge is used as inoculum in aeration tank and called anaerobic sludge digester fine now here aerobic microbes get killed and anaerobic microbes will digest the organic matter and produce the gases such as methane carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide so this is all about the sewage treatment which include three steps primary secondary or tertiary and tertiary treatment so under the primary we have seen for the physical process totally physical process to remove the debris with the help of filtration and sedimentation fine now whatever the outcome from the primary treatment or physical process that effluent we pass for the secondary treatment fine and the secondary treatment is totally biological process and here the formation of the flocks will take place is it it and even the bod of waste matter will be reduced now after this in the tertiary treatment sedimentation tank we will pass and here all the flocks will be settled down and then what we will get activated sludge isn't it and ultimately we are getting these gases methane carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide so this is all about the microbes in sewage treatment